So over the last four months, I've uh, met with mayors, CEOs, presidents, uh, Welga, um, LGMA, backbenchers, residents, all to hear their concerns about the proposed boundaries of the new metropolitan area. Today I'd like to announce that as of July 15, we plan to reduce the local governments from 30 to 15. The announcement today is all, will go off to the um, advisory board. As you all know, the independent advisory board will be one for taking those submissions. As you saw last week, we made the announcement of Perth and all of Vincent going into Perth. Or well, today, I've submitted the rest. And they're made up of the following. Gosnells and Canning, Bayswater and Bassendine, Belmont and Kalamunda, South Perth and Victoria Park, Swan with Mundaring, and Quinana with Coburn. One of the clear identifiers why we have 15 is that Fremantle and Melville remain as identities as they are, and the proposal that came out in July had them emerging as one. Today is another uh, indication of the debacle that is local government reform by the Barnett government. What we've seen today is another set of maps. Uh, it's really the third set that we've seen, including a second set that was released last week, uh, that continues to put uh, forward uh, a whole lot of uncertainty for so many people in local government in the metropolitan area. Um, people are going to go to Christmas, um, particularly those people who are employed in local governments, unsure of their future. And added to that is that we've got uh, amendments to the Local Government Act that have been introduced by the Minister uh, and we'll be debating those in the next few weeks, which puts at question the, the independence of the Local Government Advisory Board. Um. Certainly the City of Fremantle is very pleased. Um, I think it's a sensible way forward and one that actually supports the key arguments that we were making in Fremantle was one that we needed to keep um, Fremantle as a separate local government focused on the heart of Fremantle as a primary regional centre, um, but also one that had a really strong community of interest around it. Well, I understand. I mean, it's one of those, it's always hard when you've got major changes like this. You're always going to have some councils that feel like they've got a good result and some that feel like, you know, that they're losing important parts of that. I do think, though, that um, that those parts of Coburn do relate strongly to Fremantle as a centre. Um, many people use come come to Fremantle all the time and see it as many ways as as part of their backyard. So I think it's actually still a good. Um, even though I understand that Coburn is not happy with it, I do think that there's a really strong logic and rationale behind the government's plans. Well, Coburn, Australia's most sustainable city, city announced in 2012 has a population just over 100,000 people and we believe that our assets, our cash reserves should not be carved up and handed over to other local governments who are basically um, smaller in number, around the 30,000 mark, who have debt and also have poor infrastructure. We've already done some sums on this and there'll be at least $100 million to be funded by the state government with this merger proposals that they've put forward. So they'll need to find $100 million for the merger to take effect on their terms and also residents of the city of Coburn or what will be, would be left of the city of Coburn will be facing significant rate hikes in the order of 15 plus percent each year.